Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about a request from one of your comments regarding mastering. So I'm going to be making a two part video. The first part is going to be regarding rendering stems, how to do it, why we want to render stems from a project. And the second video is going to be a follow up with some more tips regarding mastering. So these two videos are going to be regarding mastering, mixing and rendering stems. Now, this project I have here is a EDM track. And from beginning to finish, um, I have it to the point where I like it and I'm ready to render the stems. And one would ask, well, why render the stems? Now, before we answer that question, this song, I've been working on it with a limiter, just hitting zero dB from beginning to end. And the song is loud. At the drop, it's around minus 7.5 RMS, which is kind of competitive. You can push to like minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, which is like the Martin Garrix, Dimitri Vegas-like mic, Jay Hardway. You know, that's at the very loud territory. But with this, um, we're clipping right into the limiter, which is why we want to render the stems. Because if I play this back um, on the loudest part of the track this is the drop visually we can see here you know we're going well over zero we're hitting a hot signal when you hear that word hot it means that we're driving that signal very hot and this isn't a very wise thing to be doing because if we turn off that limiter you guys can see here we're hitting like plus three plus 3.5 there's a lot of overhead and this will make the limiter put in extra work it could also result in distortion that you don't want it could be pleasing but and the thing you want to keep in mind is that you could just get away with just turning on the limiter rendering this calling it a day you know your fans your audience people in the crowd they probably won't even be able to tell that that you did that that you got away with that but if you want to be able to slap on a compressor um, equalizer you need and it's better to have some headroom why because how are you supposed to put let me demonstrate so let's say for instance i wanted to put a compressor that's just barely touching the mix just barely and we have a uh, really slow attack so it, it lets the transients kick through we have a very fast release we have a low ratio but the threshold is all the way up so you'd think this is probably not even going to touch the mix but you can see there, it's already doing 2 dB of compression. And that's because we need that headroom. We need the mix to not be so hot so that we'll be able to just barely touch that. And the way you can do that is A, either by bringing down the volume of these stems in your existing project. But the reason why we want to render the stems is because then we also can remove the error of MIDI. Because MIDI, when you work with your synthesizers, Sometimes it's not always the same. You'll be working with your synth and um, you play it back or you render it. It won't always be the same. There might be little nuances, little differences. So taking your project and rendering all the stems, the synth, the kick, the percussion, then you're left with just waveforms that you can see. You can analyze them for errors. You can make adjustments and really fine tune that and fix that in the final mastering stage. So FYI, like... You know, I've been doing mixing from beginning to end. Um, and I recommend to you guys, you know, always be uh, making little adjustments. Don't just vomit on a track and expect a mixing engineer to fix that for you. Because, you know, EDM and mixing, big room and mixing, electro house and mixing, they go hand in hand. It's uh, a very technical process. So it's not uncommon for a lot of people to be doing their mixing in-house as they go. And that's what I've been doing. But when we go back to this topic of the signal being too hot, right? When the signal is so hot, we won't be able to just barely graze and do like a tiny bit of compression. We're, we're pretty much screwed. You can see there, like it's just doing ridiculous amounts. So to circumvent that and to approach into the limiter with more headroom. Now, a lot of people will say minus six, you know, minus three. I think something like minus three, minus four is good. Um, you don't want to be too quiet. So what we're going to do is we're going to render the stems. And that way we'll have a project where we have all of our waveforms. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these plugins. 
And like I said, you could keep the mastering in this project by simply holding control and dragging these down. And that way you have less headroom or sorry, more headroom. The master would be much lower. But um, what we're going to do is it's OK. Even if like this track, for instance, if the kick hits like zero dB, that's OK. Don't worry. We will be doing that adjustment and we'll be looking at the how loud the mix is in the next project. And we'll be taking the sliders down so that the mix coming into the master is going to be around like minus four, minus three, rather than plus three, which is so driven and it's just slamming into the limiter. So what do we do here? You can go to uh, your menu file, export, go to wave file. And uh, you're going to want to go I've already done this. So I'm going to make a new folder so I can demonstrate to you guys call it like stems here, I'll call it stems uh, tutorial. When you're naming your wave file, it's gonna, you're gonna put a name and it'll attach the name of your mixer track. So if I call this tutorial, for instance, uh, let's put like tutorial, whatever, I'll just put tutorial, it'll add the names like tutorial kick base, tutorial kick, tutorial top loop. So I'll write tutorial, click Save. Now make sure you do 32 bit float. This is very important because dithering is going to be done in the mastering stage. The final limiter is going to be what does dithering. And I'll talk about dithering in part two of the video. Uh, resampling quality is relative to your time stretching pitch stretching. It's regarding your sample. So it says their interpolation method for sampler channels. Um, stick with six point hermite or higher. I'm going to leave it on 512 point. Um, we don't have any master effects. We're just rendering the stems. So that's fine. This is plug and delay compensation, trim the plug and delay compensation silence, leave that on. You're usually always going to want to leave that on. And we have these split mixer tracks, which is what we want that will render each individual stem, we don't need to do anything special for these. So we're going to go ahead and hit start and we'll come back once we have the stems. All right, so the stems have been rendered. So go ahead and do a new project. Make sure you're working in the same tempo. We were working in 128 BPM. The project key was D minor. We'll go to the stems that we have. Um, I also like to use a program called bulk rename utility. This is kind of an extra tip. You guys don't have to do this. It's completely optional. But I like doing this because um, as you guys notice, it adds that tutorial in front of it. And I want to get rid of that. And if you want to do it in a fast way, bulk rename utility will allow you to navigate to where you have the stems. And in this section here, you can say replace. You can select all of these and say replace that tutorial underscore with nothing. And you hit rename. And then voila, we have that tutorial underscore removed. That's an optional step. But if you guys want to do that, I'll link it in the video description. So you can grab that utility It's free. One thing I want to note is that you want to delete two things, one that's called current and one that's called master. These two are not relative to your stems. They're just the master and then a current one that's selected. These will always be deleted when you're doing your stems. Secondly, I had my bass and kick routed to a track called kick and bass, so, uh, kick and bass bus, which is this one kick plus bass. So I got to delete kick and bass. So now I'm left with 31 stems. And we can just simply hit control a and drag them in. And we've now successfully rendered our stems 32 bit float. And we have them all here. Uh, before we go on to part two, we're going to organize these and link them to the mixer. So I can show you guys how to link them to the mixer. And uh, I like to organize my stuff by the effects. So I like to put my percussion up all the way at the top. I have the hats there. Cool. Um, let's bring all the effects at the bottom. So I'm going to hit this and press shift down, bring them all down there. All right, effects, we got more effects, 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 we have a fill ending percussion, hold shift, and you can select multiple top loop, Tom, snare, snare. So these ones will come up. These are percussive elements. And this just makes it easier for you to see everything in a bit more detail. So we have that stuff there, lead pad, 
riser lead, riser sub. We have the vocal and that is all the effects. Cool. So now we will just move these up. And at this point, we have everything nicely organized on our playlist. So what we'll do is bring up the pattern window and we'll hit all here. We don't need the sampler. That's just a default pattern. Delete that. And we're going to select click and hold and go down. There we go. And go to the insert one, right click channel routing, route select the channel starting from this track. And now we just populated each one with their individual uh, bus. Now, I would recommend again, organize these. So you're going to have to move these around, hold control with the mouse and alt with your arrow keys, move them over effects, effects, effects. So these are all effects. I'm going to hold control with the mouse F2 and I'm going to paint these as blue. I'm going to just move the percussion all the way to the left, similar to how we have top to bottom in the playlist hats, OJ snare. This is another snare snare toms top loop ending percussion i'm going to paint these as purple i like putting purple for my percussion and there's one more percussion one more effect and then these are synths and the vocal so what have we done thus far we have rendered the stems as 32 bit Okay, there's no dithering on those samples because dithering is going to be done by the final limiter. Remember that. And we have everything linked here with their own individual track. And the next step is going to be the mastering. But before we go into that part two, again, the signal is going to be very hot. Let me show you. If we go to the drop, one minute seven, let's turn off the limiter. You can see here again, it's the same thing. Like really nothing has changed, but the benefits is we're not dealing with MIDI anymore. We can see the waveforms. We could maybe make volume adjustments or cut things visually. So we have a little bit more power with the control. We don't have the volatility of MIDI in the synthesizers. That's one benefit. And when we have these stems, we can always come back to them, especially if you are working in something and you're like, hey, I really like that tom I used. Maybe you want to come back to that and use that if it's a similar tempo or if you want to grab a sn snippet of it. Now, what I would do here is hold control to select all of them and I would bring down the volume minus, let's go to like minus five. And when we go to minus five, don't think of it as it's now minus five on the master because now look, we're around minus 2.5, minus 3. Okay, minus 2.5. So we could even go a bit more. We could go to, let's do like minus 7, see what happens. You can see there, we're at like minus 3.8. That's good. That's going to give us headroom. And if you guys remember when I was talking about the SSL comp, what happened with the SSL comp? With the SSL comp, we had it at a, these settings, a very relaxed attack, a fast release, allowing those punchiness to kick in. What's going to happen now? You can see there it's barely being activated. And that's what we want because now we have way more control. And as we put things on like EQ, this and that, we'll still be able to get a loud track, guys. We'll still be able to make up a lot of gain and pump it up. So don't think like by doing this, you lose the loudness of your track. Rather, you can eliminate artifacts, not deal with the MIDI problems, not deal with a whole array of issues and go into the limiter clean and pump it up. Um, in the next video, we're going to be talking about how I would approach mixing and mastering this. Um, I wouldn't really say mixing. Yeah, you can do some final stage mixing, but you guys should be doing mixing throughout your whole project. Don't leave that at the very end because with EDM, the kick is so important. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about mastering your levels, how to master for Spotify and YouTube. The streaming services is a bit different. And uh, that's going to be a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you'll be able to take some tips out of rendering these stems. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash a like button, uh, drop a comment, let me know what you guys want to see. Stay subscribed and hit the notification bell so you're alerted of my uploads. And I will see you guys in part two later today. Take care.